Hello. Uh, welcome back. This week we have a little bit different of a setup. That's mainly because this week we're going to be going over the new A10 Mini Pro. Now I just got this in this week. I've done a couple of videos with the regular A10. I did a brief overview and then we did a couple things with campaigning with it uh, for a specific setup. This setup obviously is a little bit different from the other videos I've done. I'm trying something different because I wanted to put this in the environment it was kind of designed to be in. So I've got three cameras set up. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through those. Uh, I've got my main uh, Sony camera that I use for all of my records. I have a brand new GoPro 7 for kind of a side cut shot. I have an inexpensive Canon uh, Handycam type setup as well. And my last input is my computer running the control software. So real quick overview of the the physical switcher itself. It's mostly the exact same thing that we saw with the regular A10 mini. The IO ports on the back are exactly identical. Uh, they did rotate the ethernet port 180 degrees for some reason, but most of the front of this is exactly the same. They did give us a couple extra buttons. They gave us all these buttons right here. We have a one button start for record and a stop a one button start for a stream as well as a stop. Then we have these six buttons which control our HDMI outputs. Now I've got the HDMI output plugged up to this monitor right here and that has my multi view on it right now but I can control it with any of my inputs, my program outs, whatever that may be, or my multi view. This feature is something that a lot of people ask for and they went ahead and put it in. I think this is kind of one of the defining features of this model, more so than some of the other stuff. You have your preview and your program, camera one, camera two, camera three, ca camera four, or in this case, laptop. You have your media pool, what, whatever is activated in your media pool, your streaming information, your record information, and like I said, you can do two different record devices. You also see all of your audio and since I've got a bunch of different cameras all the microphones are on so that's why you see so many different meters bouncing up and down but I only have the mic on the back of this plugged in so when you are streaming this says on air if it's flashing it's connecting if it's solid red then you are actually streaming it'll show you your bit rate and your cache it does a cache that way if you drop or you have any problems with your stream it will cache those and then everyone watching on the other end, once it reconnects, it, they just catch back up unless it fills up. It doesn't tell you how long or how many frames it's doing. It gives you a percentage, which is kind of weird. I don't know. And it'll just get too full. And so I'm not certain what happens on the other end of that. And because this really hones in that this is for a multiple camera shoot so that the camera person can see their cameras. Uh, this will make running um, multiple pan tilt zooms or robo cams very easily. You can you can put your PT, PTZ controller next to this. This obviously doesn't take up a lot of space. Give yourself a small multi view and you're ready to go. You still have your scalers built in so you don't have to spend time trying to figure out which resolution, bit rate all of your cameras are coming out of along with the record button and the stream button on the front of this you also have it in the software and you can actually set it comes with three setups already installed there is an xml file on the computer which you can go in and you can copy and paste and you can add more streaming sites if you want like uh, vimeo but you do have to edit that xml file and then have it on whatever computer has the controlling software. I'm actually really surprised when I first got this. It did actually store this. I have turned this unit off a couple of times and the stream key is still there, which is actually kind of nice. And then you can determine what server you want to use. The, the YouTube has two servers, primary and backup. Facebook has just one server and Twitch has a whole bunch. Now I just updated the software to 8.2.1 and before I did that it had three. So now it's got a healthy amount including several from the US. 
Below that, depend does not matter which service you pick. Oh, there we go. The moment I click away from YouTube, my, my key goes away. Below there, you have your quality. And next to it, it tells you what megabits per second it's going to be broadcasting. When you change this, it, it changes for the record as well. So it gives it the same file format and everything. So you can do HyperDeck high, medium, or low. And, and HyperDeck's mainly use ProRes. So that's probably what those are based off of. Or you can go streaming high, medium, or low. I did do this earlier, uh, a test with streaming on medium, and I had really bad results. So I would do streaming on high or even HyperDeck low just to get a good quality out, especially if you're doing a corporate event or a house of worship event where it needs to be a good continuous stream with no drops. You can also ask it to turn on and off display status, which turns it on and off at the bottom of the software, as you can see down here. Now if we close that, we can move on to the record stream, which I'm already recording. It has a ticker going on. I can, if I had another um, record device, I could switch between them really easily. And I wanna go over real quick what I'm recording to, because you come out of the USB-C. I'm going to a USB-C kind of shuttle, which has a lot of things on it. And from there, I plugged up just a regular USB hard drive. So it's kind of unorthodox, but it reads it and it records. You can, if you have a USB-C thumb drive or one of these guys, which is regular USB and then USB-C on the other side, you can plug this straight into the back. You're not gonna get as much recording time, but you can plug it straight into the back and be good. So we can capture a still just like we can from this menu and then time code and time code is set to my time of day. So the biggest thing is this is twice the price of a regular A10 mini. You can, you know, in the way math works, that means you can buy two of those for one of these. In my kind of opinion, my little gut feeling is that this is what they wanted and they didn't finish it in time and they wanted to push everything to market before the end of last year. So what they did is they scrapped a couple features, sent it to market, made a lower price point, and got it out there. And then they finished it and then released this. If you're running multiple cameras, you want this model as opposed to the regular model because of the multi-view. You're still looking at a video switcher that only costs $600. I'm just having a hard time making this video and I don't know why. I think it's because I don't really love this thing. I'm, I'm glad I bought it. Oh, by the way, I bought this. This is not a paid advertisement. This is not a paid review. I think for where the other one was really good for breakout rooms, but when you're at double the price, I mean, the features that you're using, even if you're streaming on some level, you're going to need a computer sitting next to you. Anyway. I think it's, I think it's more underwhelming than anything else. Like I was expecting to get something in that just, you know, like I looked at it and it read my mind and it did all of those things and I didn't have to, you know, program it and all this stuff. Cause there's still a lot of programming you need to do. If you don't have a stream deck with the companion app, then you have to make macros, which is fine, but there's no buttons on here for macros. So again, I need to figure out a way to do macros on the software, or maybe I just do all my macros on my stream deck and call it a day. It's, I thought this would be way more self-sufficient and it's not. I think at the end of the day, after playing with the regular version, as well as this $600 for this, I'm being left and I'm, I'm, I'm just wanting, can Barco make one of these? That'd be really cool. Can analog way make one of these? That'd be really cool too. I would love to see an analog way version of this, maybe a little bit bigger. Cause you know, it's analog way and it's bar, you know, or Barco. I did see that there's a company called um, Epion Eff Effian that makes a mini system as well. There's this $2,000. Now granted, if Barco made one, it'd probably be $30,000 because it's Barco. But, you know, price points aside, like it's, it's a little bit bigger. It's all touch screen. There's no physical buttons. It, if you've ever used one of their switchers, they made the Pearl and the Pearl 2. They're designed with streaming and recording already in mind and they already have internal hard drives at least their pearls did 
So a lot of stuff you can do here, you know, I think it had roots in those and black magic just scaled everything down. This is this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a little bit different. Um, I kind of went at it with a little bit less of a script than I normally do as well, just cause I had a hard time kind of figuring out whether or not I like this thing. And I think the jury's still out. Thanks for watching to the end. If you made it this long, please uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, uh, turn on the bell. If you want to get notifications, I'm trying to push stuff out every week. If there's any, anything specific you guys want me to cover, if there's anything that's companion based, if there's anything black magic based, uh, I work for a company that owns a lot of black magic stuff so I can run through some different black magic scenarios. If it's anything that's analog way, I can try to fire up my analog way uh, simulator and walk you through a couple things. Same thing with the Barco uh, Event Master program. And let me know if there's something specific you want me to cover. And I'll do my best. Thanks, guys. Which button is the stop?